everyone and welcome to this video by Intellipath. You might think that the general concepts we study about in early years of our education are never applicable in our day-to-day -day life. But you might be wrong. Today we will talk about one such topic, recursion. You might not realize it, but we use recursion in the smallest of the things we do in our everyday life. Now let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we have what is recursion, after which we will see recursion and memory area after which and lastly we will see types of recursion. Now before we dive into the video, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates from us. So now let's take a look at our first agenda that is what is recursion. In computer science, the concept of recursion is frequently employed to solve large problems by partitioning them into simpler ones. A function can directly or indirectly invoke itself through the mechanism of recursion. Recursive function is the name given to the related function. These algorithms can be used to solve some complex problems fairly quickly. Now the following is a requirement for all recursive algorithms. Firstly, we have base case, that is when to stop. And then we have the focus on base case. And lastly, we have the recursive call, that is breaks problems into small instances using recursive calls. In the work towards base case, we simplify the problem. Example, divide list into two parts, each smaller than the original. We solve a more straightforward variant of the problem using the same approach through a recursive call. The base case is the answer to the simplest problem that can be solved. For instance, the base case for the problem, find the greatest number in a list, would be true if the list contained just one number. As by definition, the largest number is the one that is there. Now let's take a look at the mathematical interpretation of recursion. You have a problem statement here that says compute the sum of n natural numbers with recursion technique. Now if we try to form a function out of it, the function would say function of n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on till the number n. And if we simplify it further, we have the function of n that is equal to summation of k equals to 0 till k equals to n and if we simplify that even further we get function of n equals to n plus function of n minus 1 and the function of n minus 1 is the recursive step. Now in this function of n that equals to summation of k equals to 0 till k equals to n we have two parts. First is the base case that is if n equals to 0 the function just shuts down and it returns nothing. Then we have the recursive step that is function of n equals to n plus function of n minus 1. Let's move on to our next agenda that says recursion and memory area. Now a function's memory is allocated on the stack when it is invoked. In computing architectures, stacks are areas of memory where data is added or removed according to the last and first out that is LIFO principle where the last element inserted is also the first element removed. The stack is a section of memory that is dedicated for each program. When a function runs, its state data is added to the top of the stack. When the function ends, this data is deleted from the stack. Now let's move on to our next agenda that is types of recursion. Firstly, we have direct recursion. It is referred to as direct recursion when a function calls itself. This causes a one-step recursive call when the function calls another function inside of another function. As you can see in this example, we have a function called fun and we have the variable as its parameter called in z. We are calling the function in this function itself and we are given the parameter as z minus 1. And the main function, we are calling the fun function again. And as you can see, the part where we are calling the fun function and given the parameter as z minus 1, this is the recursive call inside the function body. Next up we have indirect recursion. Additionally, indirect recursion exists when a number of functions are interdependent. For instance, function A calls function B and function C responds to that call. Indirect recursion occurs when function C, under any situation, calls back to function A. As you can see in this example, these two are interlinked. Then we have another type of recursion 
called tail recursion, which is also known as the bottom recursion. The recursive function is essentially used as the function's final statement in a tail recursion. Therefore, tail recursion is what happens when nothing remains to be done after returning from the recursive function. And as you can see in this example, we have two functions. First one is the fun function and then we have the main function. Inside the fun function, the last line is the recursive call at the end of the function body. And lastly, we have non-tail recursion. The non-tail or head recursion of a function. The initial statement in a function will be the recursive call if it does one on its own. It implies that no statement or operation should be called prior to the recursive calls. As you can see in this example, the very first statement in the fun function is a recursive call itself. And as you can see, it is not the final execution of this function. And that's it for this video. Thank you. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below.